since the heart was enlivened, since his heart was enlivened by this chance for Gore Kata, Morari's eyes rolled to and fro, and he shed tears of joy. Bhakti Srivas was like an effulgent sun, bringing into bloom the lotus hearts of the twice born. See, so that's so Srivas was a Brahmin, so he could preach to Brahmins. Often they'd come him, and he would he would bring that Brahmin consciousness, the uh, like mode of goodness, into full bloom, which is pure goodness, and only a devotee can do that. See? And Nichananda would take anybody into any modes, and Srivas could do it too, whoever would come to him, whether they were Brahmin or sannyasi or a low class, whoever would come to a devotee, they'd never get turned away like that. You know, they come submissively and unchallenged. And then you see how Srivas with the Brahmachari, the Brahmachari with all his austerities could not approach Lord Chaitanya. See? He couldn't get into the kirtan, but all he did was approach Srivas sincerely and petitioned him a number of times. And Srivas said, I'll, I'll sneak you in. See? And the Lord accepted, ultimately. He accepted. He says, oh, you came through Srivas, my devotee. That's all I'm asking. That's the process that the Lord came to teach. But do you understand? You most people, it's right there in the book how to do it, but people don't understand the process. They still go to persons who haven't realized Krishna as their guru. That ain't the process. Is that Where is that in the book? You go to somebody that hasn't realized Krishna. Lord Chaitanya folded the devotees of those who have realized Krishna, not those who haven't. Krishna... Das Kaviraj, his shiksha gurus were all self-realized. Where is it to go to persons who haven't realized Krishna and don't have ecstatic devotion like these devotees did? Where is that in the book? Where, where is it that Lord Chaitanya went to a bogus guru who, who thought he knew more than his own guru, which people, when you change the guru's books, and you and or you preach different even if you preach differently than what's in the books you're still under the thing that you think you know better than your guru because you're just in bewildered still See? he didn't he didn't teach go to persons like Ramachandra Puri he said that person challenged the guru uh, my, you know of Madhavendra Puri and thought he knew better that's what you do when you preach something different than what's in Prabhupada's books well, of course you can't help it because you're still in Maya you, and, and people will not get out of Maya listening to you. Okay? No, Lord Chaitanya showed that you. I went to a person who was a Rasik devotee, who had genuine ecstatic devotion, that had the blessing of a bona fide guru and the proof was he was an ecstatic devotee who chanted Hare Krishna Maha Mantra in devotional ecstasy. That's the real guru. Why can't people understand that? Is that not too plainly evident? Yeah, it's plainly evident, but you've got to hear the sound vibration from a real guru. And then all of a sudden goes, boing, whoa. That is really, it's really actually, how come I didn't see that? Because you've been hypnotized by the illusionists. Checklists that don't agree with the, the books the essence and conclusion in the books. Hey, no different. And you get that by hearing. You see, extensive hearing means extensive purification of all the cobwebs and all that stuff and come out and say, God, you know, this... Krishna is working through Prabhupada. Krishna is working here. Same Krishna. It's actually logical. It's actually clear. It's like, yeah, man, you know, hey, man, <laughs> the same Krishna obviously is working through Prabhupada, is working here. That's why Prabhupada came. It really, you start to think right. You think like, yeah, you know, he's, I, he's right. I, he's proved it to me, man. I listen, listen, listen. Is he talking true, true? Is he actually representing Prabhupada as he is? And my God, he's, he is. See, that's what you get from sincere hearing. Really wanting Krishna. Because Krishna comes through the hearing. 
you know, from those who hanker after their saints now, and you get become a saint just by hearing from a real saint. That's the process. Great process, isn't it? Wonderful way, simple way. What's the difficulty? Okay. The only difficulty is when you when you're muddled because of all that stuff, and you don't you have to hear sufficiently, get purified, just like Jesus taught his disciples. He said, "You are clean. See, you are clean by the word I spoke to you. Look." And they went over there and and sat in the temple, and boom. They got the spirit of devotion spontaneous, just like it happens here. You know, I could say the same thing. Dasu, Govinda, you are clean by the word I've spoken to you. And what is the proof? Boom, in Mayapur, drunk as skunks on bhakti, just like they got at the Pentecost, wasn't it? They became drunk as skunks on bhakti. See, that's the awakening, and now you have the permanent enjoyment of mellows. When you chant, you stay blissful, you hear from your guru while he's on the planet, you stay blissful. Now now the purports are revealed to you, you have faith in guru and Krishna, and now you read the books and you're in ecstasy. This is so bona fide. I know I have to keep hard. I know it creates doubt in people, me harping on. I love the truth. I love how bona fide it is. I want to glorify how bona fide this is and prove and show you how bona fide it is. Even if I have to do it for a million years, and if I feel like doing it, I'm going to do it. I like to point out how bona fide this is because it is. You know, and prove it. Because if that's if it's proven to your mind, your sweet and dirty mind, whatever it is, could be oh sweet mind or no no oh mind full of cobwebs. <laughs> you know, we petition you. Look at the truth, man. Look how bona fide what's going on here is. You know, yeah, I like it. You don't like it yet? Keep hearing, man. <laughs> it's medicine. And medicine is sometimes bitter, right? Why is he keep? Yeah. <laughs> Take your medicine. <laughs> I love realizing how bona fide it is here. I don't know. You don't like it? Well, there's some thing inside there. It should like, you should like it too. Why shouldn't you like? You know, to convince people that it's so bona fide here. Otherwise they convince, they're convinced that the illusion is bona fide. That ain't good. Aren't we here to help others understand how bona fide it is here? You know, take advantage of the parampara working here, you know, and delivering people because people, you bring them here and they just come and begin to develop faith from that faith with it, which isn't blind, like, you know, see, we're not, I'm not, I'm not into blind faith. You know, we intelligent faith, you know, like, hey, man, this is bona fide, more bona fide than uh, this other stuff, you know. Hey, and then you're, you know, you got a mind full of cotton balls. This is bona fide, rectified, and uh, uh, everything else. Okay.